Okay, so let's see if you know enough algebra and geometry to solve this problem. So here is the question. We have this rectangular object right here, and we're being told that the surface area of this thing is 78. So you can see the dimensions here. So the length is x plus 2, the width is 3x, and the height is x. So these are the dimensions of this rectangular uh, object. And what we're trying to figure out here is what x is equal to. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. Okay, so one more time, the surface area of this figure is 78. What is x equal to given the following uh, dimensions? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct solution here is x is equal to 13 over 7. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and A plus. If you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't like algebra and I don't like geometry and I especially don't like algebra and geometry. Well, listen, let's have a little bit of fun with this problem. But, uh, you know, if you do want to understand geometry, know this, that uh, you got to understand algebra first. There is a lot of algebra in geometry. So if your goal is to uh, learn geometry, make sure you understand algebra first. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. Now, if you didn't get this right, but you felt you were on the right track, uh, what could have happened is maybe some of the algebra uh, may have tripped you up. Whatever the case is, let's start getting into the solution, and I'll give you some suggestions on um, different aspects of this problem. But the first thing we need to understand is what is the problem, right? Well, we're talking about surface area. So what is surface area? Well, surface area, okay, is the area. So let's just take this top right here. Let's say I said find the area of this top. Matter of fact, let's not use that. Let's use this side right here. Let's just focus in on this right here. If I said find the area, and of course we're dealing with a rectangular object, and let's say this was 3 and this was 5. If I said find the area of this side, well, how would we find that area? Well, the area of... A rectangle is length times its width. So here, the area there would be just be 3 times 5 or 15 units uh, squared, right? So that's area. Well, surface area is basically the sum total of all the area of um, that's covering this rectangular object. Basically, think of this as a box, like a shoe box. And how many sides do we have here? Well, we got this side, right? So let's call this like the front. If this is the front, well, we got the back back here too, right? So there's one, two. Kind of have to use your little 3D imagination to kind of see what's going on here. So we have one, two uh, sides there. And then we have the top. And then, of course, we'll have a bottom down here, right? So there's uh, three, four. And then, of course, we have these little left and right sides right there. So we have a total of six uh, sides. Now, what we have to do is find the sum total of these areas, right? So we got six sides. And here, you're just going to have to be very careful on what the dimensions are. So, for example, this side right here, let's just focus in on this so you can kind of practice. What is the dimensions? What's the, the length and width of this side? Okay. Well, hopefully, you can see that this height is x, and its uh, length or width, however you want to think about it, is 3x, right? So, the area here would be x times 3x. So... Effectively, what you need to do is just find the area the area of all these sides and add them up. So you're going to obviously have some sort of algebraic expression because you have all well, x plus 2, 3x, and x. You do all of that, and you're going to set that equal to 78, and then you're going to solve for x. So I'm basically telling you how to solve the problem. Uh, but again, if you didn't get this right or if you're struggling with it, you probably may have gotten tripped up with some of the algebra, okay? Because there is, you know, it gets a little messy, but nothing too crazy. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so let's be a little more specific about this. So let's start with the front. I'll call this the front and back. So here's the front. It's gonna be the exact same uh, dimensions, right, as the back. So we'll call this the front and back. So what's its dimensions? Well, it's going to be x uh, plus two, right? It's its length. 
and the height here is x, so over here is x as well. So the area here, uh, this front part, and same thing with the back part, is x times x plus 2, or that's the dimensions of it, right? So we'll find the area here in a second, but of course it'd be length times its width. Okay, so now let's move on here uh, to the rest of these. Again, we talked about the side, so here is x uh, times 3x, and we'll uh, kind of just show that right here. So that's the sides, and of course we have two sides, and then we're left with the top and bottom. So right here, the top and bottom is what? Well, what's this dimension here? Well, if this is x plus 2, this is also x plus 2. And what about this side right there? Well, that would be 3x. Okay, so the, the, the top right here, which is the same as the bottom, is 3x uh, uh, by x plus 2. So again, if you want to find the area here, you just multiply this times this. Okay, so hopefully, you know, you kind of conceptually see what's going on here. Now it's just a matter of just kind of, kind of crunching the numbers, the variables, and let's go ahead and start doing that right now. All right, so again, the surface area is the sum total of all these sides of this rectangular object, which, again, we have a top, we have a bottom, okay, which are the same dimension. We have a front and a back, and we have two sides, which are uh, have the same dimension. So let's just kind of organize our thoughts here and calculate this out. All right, so the top and bottom would be this. Okay, so 3x times x plus 2. Let's kind of go back up to our little figure here. So the top here is 3x times x plus 2. That's the area, right? Again, we're calculating the surface area, but this would just be, for example, like the top. So we're going to have to multiply this thing by 2 uh, to get the total surface area for the top and bottom, right? So that's just the easiest way. So here is the top and bottom. Again, this is how we find the area. And then here, the front and back was x times x plus 2. Again, we can kind of reference our little drawing right here, or x times x plus 2. So that's the area of that. But we need to multiply by 2, again, because we have two of these. That represents the front and back. And then lastly, uh, we had our sides, which is x times 3x, but we have two sides. So now this is kind of our setup. And so we kind of double check this and we're like, all right, this is, you know, makes sense to me. And before you get too deep into a problem, always double check that you have your, you know, expressions correct, you know, matches the figure and everything seems good. So at this point, Let's just start cleaning up these uh, algebraic expressions. And of course, we're going to uh, equate this to uh, the surface, the known surface area, which is 78. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So this is basically what it looks like. Of course, you know, I'm kind of running out of room from left to right. But uh, we have 2 times 3x times x plus 2 plus 2 times x times x plus 2 plus 2 times x times 3x, all of that is going to be equal to 78. So let's start working on this right now. Okay, so let's start right here. So 3x times x is going to be 3x squared. All right, so 3x times 2 is 6x. Okay, now I'm going to multiply that by 2, but I'm just kind of controlling my expression right now, working on the inside groups first. Okay, these inside parentheses. So this would be 2 um, x times x is x squared. And then x times 2 is 2x squared, and then we'll multiply that by 2, as you can see right here. And then we have x times 3x, which is 3x squared, and we'll multiply that by 2. So again, we're just, you know, one taking one step at a time. If you try to take too many steps, what's going to end up happening is you might be thinking that you're, you know, taking a shortcut, but what you're doing is massively increasing the chances that you're going to make an error, okay? So... Uh, if you want to do things right, the you know you always want to do things right the first time, which means you have to go at a nice controlled pace so you can kind of audit yourself, grade yourself as you go. Even then, it's uh, you know still always possible to make a mistake, but you know double check as you go because you can catch errors along the way. All right, so we have two of these, all of these uh, respective sides. So let's go ahead and distribute these twos uh, into these uh, various expressions. So two times three x squared gives us 6x squared, 2 times 6x gives us 12x, and then 2 times x squared, 2x squared, 2 times 2x gives us 4x, got to be very careful here, and then 2 times 3x squared gives us 6x squared, and that's all equal to 78, but again, we have to continue on with this algebra, 
And the next step here is to combine like terms. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So here's an x squared, here's an x squared, and here's an x squared. So six, uh, two and six gives us a total of 14 x squared. Then we have 12 x and four x gives us 16 x squared. That's equal to 78. Now at this point, what you can do is hopefully, uh, you know, notice that you're dealing right now with a quadratic equation. All right, so this is kind of the phase two of this problem, okay? And uh, at this point, you have to start saying to yourself, okay, I got a quadratic equation. How do I solve a quadratic equation? Or first of all, you know, what do you know about a quadratic equation? Well, the first thing is you're going to have two solutions, always have two solutions, but there's uh, various approaches that you can take. You could possibly take the square root of both sides. You could possibly factor, uh, and if you don't want to do that, you can always use a quadratic formula. But before you even start doing any of that, you should look for opportunities to simplify your equation. So if we notice here, we can factor out a 2 out of all of these expressions. So in other words, uh, the 2 is the greatest common factor. So I can write the left-hand side as 2 times 7x squared plus 8x uh, equal to 78. But 78 is divisible by 2. So effectively, I can uh, divide both sides of the equation by 2 and I end up with this lovely equation right here, 7x squared plus 8x is equal to 39, okay? So you always wanna work with the simplest version of this equation. So in other words, this equation and this equation are equivalent, but you know these numbers here are lower and easier to work with, especially if I feel like I need to use the quadratic formula, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and continue on our little adventure here. So now we've um, got 7x squared plus 8x equals uh, 39. So, you know, there's nothing we can uh, do here that's kind of obvious other than put this equation in standard form. In other words, highest to lowest power. So we're gonna scoot that 39 over to the left-hand side. So now we have a quadratic equation in standard form. When I say standard form, I mean uh, this, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. This is a quadratic equation in standard form. Now at this point here, you could attempt, I uh, could attempt to factor this quadratic trinomial, but we're dealing with pretty large numbers. Uh, so even though it might be factable, okay, and I kind of uh, reserve uh, whether it is or is not, some of you might be saying, you know what, it's in standard form, uh, you know, i.e. A, a x squared plus b x uh, plus c. So instead of trying to factor this, because it might be a little bit uh, challenging, because you may not be able to factor it, you might decide just go to go right into the quadratic formula, because it's already set up, uh, it's already written in standard form. And that's what I am going to do here. Okay, so here is our quadratic equation, 7x squared plus 8x uh, minus 39 is equal to 0. Uh, the coefficients is our, our a, b, and c. Okay, so you can see here a will be equal to 7, b is equal to 8, and c is negative 39. And now what we have to do is plug all this lovely information into the world-famous quadratic formula. So this is one formula that you should know by heart, especially if you are taking algebra. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I even remember this formula when I learned it first, probably way back in 1983. Can you believe that stuff? I don't even think they had video. Well, maybe they did have MTV. I don't remember. That's a long time ago, right? So anyways, you know, there are certain formulas that you want to commit to long-term memory, and this is one of them. Okay, so we have our A, B, and C values. What we want to do is very carefully replace these respective variables for these values and then simplify uh, the remaining um, uh, expression to solve the quadratic equation. All right, so let's go and do that right now. Okay, so here I have X is equal to uh, minus 8. 8, again, is our B value. And you always want to be double-checking as you plug this stuff in. So plus or minus square root of eight squared. Notice I'm using parentheses, minus four AC, which is gonna be seven times negative 39, right? Cause we have our A value and our C value right there, all over two A, which would be all over two times seven. Now, before you even uh, continue to proceed, I'm telling you right now, 
that a lot of students they'll they understand what the quadratic formula is, but they'll plug in the, their numbers into the quadratic formula, and then they'll make it like a little error here. They'll plug in the wrong number because there's a lot of things move you know kind of moving moving parts here. So don't do anything. Double triple check. Okay, I got everything plugged in correctly, and then proceed from there. All right, so let's go ahead and start simplifying this. So uh, we'll start with this negative eight. A negative of an eight is just negative eight plus or minus the square root of uh, eight squared, which of course is what? That's going to be 64. Now this is one of the most classic places where students uh, make an error in the quadratic formula. Okay, this is gonna be minus four times seven times negative 39. What you, a good way to handle this part of the quadratic formula is to turn this negative, this uh, uh, b squared minus 4ac, turn this into a plus and then put that negative on that 4. Okay, that's just a good reminder that this is a negative, a negative number times a positive number times a negative number. What's a negative times a positive times a negative? This whole thing is going to be positive. So instead of just trying to think of the signs, just you know, tell yourself, oh, this is negative uh, times positive. That's going to be a negative, negative times negative, positive. So just take, you know, 4 times 7 times 39. And uh, feel free to use your calculator. You're going to come up with 1092. And then 2 times 7, that is pretty easy to figure out. That, of course, will be 14. All right, so here is where we're at. So now we need to continue to clean up underneath the square root. So 64 plus 1092. Did I say 1092? I don't know if I did or not, but anyways, there it is, 1092. So 64 plus 1092 gives us 1156. So now we're down to here, and at this point, you're hoping, you're like, you're saying to yourself, I sure hope that I can take the square root of this, and it comes out to be a nice, lovely kind of whole number value, right? like a perfect square. And in this case, uh, in fact, you can. So when you take the square root of 1156, you get, let's go down here, 34. All right, so we love that when it happens. So now we're down to this expression. We have negative 8 plus or minus 34 over 14. Now, I said that there's two solutions in a quadratic equation. How do we get those two solutions? Well, what we're going to do is the following. So uh, the one uh, solution is going to be negative 8 plus 34, okay, over 14, okay? So that will be one uh, solution. The other is going to be negative 8 minus 34 over 14, just like I did right here. So let's go ahead and clean this up. So uh, negative 8 plus 34 over 14. Here, this gives us 26 over 14, and we can reduce that uh, to 13 over 7, which, of course, is our answer. Now, when we do uh, this work over here, we end up with this fraction, negative 42 over 14, but we can kind of disregard this. Now, why could I disregard this solution? Now, this is a good solution for the quadratic equation, but it's not the solution in our answer. And the, uh, the reason why, this is a negative value, right? We're, we're talking about the surface area of this rectangular object. So we're not going to have like negative 3 as like, you know, the height of the object. So we're going to go with the positive value, which of course is this value right here, 13 over 7. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in geometry, check out these courses right here. So in my pre-algebra course, I have a couple of chapters on basic geometry. But uh, if you have to understand all things geometry to include uh, proofs, then you got to check out my full geometry course. Now, if you want a good math review of basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.